Welcome everyone uh, to another video on electric machines <clears throat> and uh, we have been talking about a synchronous machine uh, more particularly about permanent magnet synchronous machine in our past videos and we have studied them to a quite uh, detail we looked at different modeling schemes uh, we looked at control schemes and then uh, the reference frame transformation and all that so I hope all of you enjoy uh, going over them. Today we are going to look at induction motor. Induction motor and uh, we will have another set of videos on the induction motor, different characteristics uh, and looking at different topics related to this. And uh, induction motor is one of the oldest motors that, we, that, that, that the industry has been using and it, uh, if you remember at the very beginning uh, when we talked about different machines we talked about two primary categories apart from dc and ac under ac machines we said we have synchronous machines and asynchronous machines okay and this is an asynchronous machine and we'll get to know a little bit more once we progress through uh, what uh, how it is uh, how it's working and you know all those uh, basic concepts uh, and in the permanent magnet synchronous machine, you know, that name says what it is. It's a synchronous machine. Okay. And the primary, uh, primary difference is depending on how the electrical frequency is related to the motor speed, uh, we can determine if it's a synchronous machine or an asynchronous machine. Okay. And uh, induction machine is an asynchronous machine. It was invented by Tesla, Nikola Tesla, you know, back in the days. And there's a very uh, nice story behind it too, you know, how, how he drew it on the sand, you know, just, just by thinking about it without having any uh, FEA models or any of the technology that we have today. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it, it's a very uh, important device, very heavily used machine in industry because it's very robust, very easy to maintain uh, and very rugged. It, it can operate in harsh environments uh, without a lot of maintenance. So it's heavily used in manufacturing, production and oil industry for, for certain applications. Okay. Uh, they come in different sizes. Typically they are used for applications above one kilowatt uh, just because of the efficiency factors that you come across and if you if you know the, the Tesla car uh, has induction machines uh, uh, as in the powertrain compared to you know a lot of other cars having permanent magnet synchronous machines uh, as the traction uh, machine uh, so, of course, there are a lot of applications uh, that, that go from washing machines to cars to power generation. You know, there are a variety of applications, different levels of power. Uh, and uh, it, it, it basically, you know, it, it, we can say it's the workhorse of, of the industry. Okay, very widely applied. So, it's very important that we understand the different concepts behind an induction machine. Okay, now let's let's look at a cross section. You know, and we've been looking at these cross sections for a while. So I hope you have uh, a good idea of you know when I draw this what that means. <clears throat> so we are looking at the stator here, and uh, if you remember from the permanent magnet synchronous machine, we had a stator similar to this, a three phase stator. And on the permanent magnet synchronous machine, the rotor was permanent magnet based. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, now, the, there are synchronous machines that have a wound rotor, so which is not permanent magnet based, which has an elect, uh, electromagnet. But uh, we, we're not going to talk about them at this point. But if you think of an induction machine, the rotor also has a set of windings, okay? And primarily, these induction machines uh, subdivide 
into wound rotor, wound rotor and squirrel cage, squirrel cage, and I'll explain what that it is in a little bit. Uh, yeah, wound rotor and squirrel cage, squirrel cage, and uh, in wound rotor case, most often these are doubly fed, which means you have uh, a voltage source that's controlling the stator field, and you will have another voltage source, another inverter controlling the rotor uh, voltages and currents. Okay, uh, that's for the double fit. But if it's and there are cases where you have just the conductors and they are shorted at the ends. For example, if you think of you know the ends, these conduct these are conductors or maybe multiple conductors, but they are just uh, connected to each. Uh, so they they're shorted. So they're basically loops of wire. Okay. They're connected and short, uh, and that's where this squirrel cage concept comes into discussion. Uh, instead of having conductors, they create uh, bars, aluminum bars, and then you have some uh, material, uh, ferromagnetic material, to support the uh, flux that will build. Okay, so with that, let's actually start talking about how it works. Okay, what will happen is. Let's assume the motor is not rotating. This rotor is stationary. Okay, it's stationary. And by the way, the reason we call it a squirrel cage is uh, the, the structure looks like a squirrel cage, you know, that you put a little squirrel in. So that's why they call it a squirrel cage. Uh, now, let's assume the rotor is not rotating. We apply a three phase set of voltages to the stator. Okay, we have a three phase balanced voltage to the stator, and we learned that when we apply a balanced set of voltages VABBVC to the stator, we get a rotating MMF, right? Rotating MMF. So, with a rotating MMF, and in the rotor, we have conductors that are making up a loop, right? There, so let's assume this as a conductor and then we have another conductor like that and these two are connected okay so hypothetically not hypothetically but that's I mean they're connected and they make up of a loop right and this change in flux through a loop we know that uh, it will build a voltage in the loop which in turn result in a current okay so uh, what will happen is this rotating MMF, since it's changing through the loop, it's going to build a voltage in the loop, and that voltage is going to result in a current. Okay? It's going to result in a current. Now, what will happen is that current will build up its own magnetic field. Remember? So if there's a current through a conductor, it's going to build its own magnetic flux, right, electromagnet. So what will happen is, see, because of this rotating field, it will generate another field on the rotor that is also rotating, okay? So basically, it induced a field onto the rotor. We call, that's why we call this an induction motor. It has an induced field on the rotor, okay? Now, uh, so, for that to happen, what do we need to see? We need to have we need to see a rotating field on the stator that, that is, which, so which has to rotate with respect. The field on the stator has to rotate with respect to the rotor. Field on the stator has to rotate with re with respect to the rotor. Okay. Now, let's say this is rotating at. Uh, 100 hertz let's assume for that for now right this is the stator field is rotating at 100 hertz we call that the synchronous speed you can convert that to rpm which will be you know you can say what how much that is in rpm uh, and so when it's rotating at that frequency if let's assume if our rotor is also 
rotating at 100 hertz maybe by an external means or you know it was rotating by itself however i'm trying to explain a certain factor here if these two are rotating if there's the stator field as well as the rotor is rotating at the same frequency or same speed do we see or does the conductors on the rotor see any change in flux okay that's the question that we need to ask if the stator field is rotating at 100 hertz and then the rotor is also moving at 100 hertz does the rotor windings the rotor loops conductor loops see a change in field if you answered no that's right you're not we're not seeing it because they're going they're moving at the same speed therefore can it induce any voltages it cannot because what uh, the law says the rotating field has to the, the the loops of conductor have to see a change in flux that's crossing through the loop right you have to see a change in flux therefore you're not going to see uh, if they are at the same speeds you're not going to see any changing flux therefore there won't be any voltages and therefore there won't be any currents all right and that is why for an induction motor in order to generate torque in order to have a field induced on the rotor it has to run at a diff a speed that is not the same as the state of field we call the field the state of field frequency or the speed of the state of field the synchronous speed and if the rotor is moving at the synchronous speed it will not see a change in flux therefore it will not see a torque it will not generate torque right because we need a state of flux to interact with the rotor flux remember we needed to have a state a rotor flux interacting with a state of flux to generate torque we talked about this concept now if they are moving at the same speed if uh, actually uh, if there is if the two feet if the rotor and the stator field is moving at the same speed the loops are not seeing any change in flux therefore there won't be any voltage or current on the rotor conductors therefore there won't be any rotor flux hence the torque will go to zero okay so what we have to understand here essentially that relative motion is key okay that means the rotor has to be either slower or faster than the synchronous speed for it to be able to generate torque whether it's positive or negative okay if it's rotating at the synchronous speed then you're not going to see any rotor flux build up all right uh, so this is the primary concept behind <coughs> the induction motor and operation okay uh, the relative speed and uh, we will talk about the details to follow uh, in from with our next video but the key takeaway for today from for, from this video is that the rotor has to rotate at a speed either slower or faster then the state of synchronous speed that is determined by the voltages and the current supply. Hence, we call it an asynchronous speed. Because if the motor rotates at the synchronous speed, then there is no torque. There's no flux generated, therefore no torque induced. Okay? All right. Uh, thank you, folks. And... Uh, We'll, we'll meet you again to go over more details on the induction motor in another video.